Father, I thank you that as we enter this time of season, this, this time of year, this, this season, Lord, that there would be a, I pray, Holy Spirit, that there is a freshness to each of us. Lord, that, that we could once again grasp the wonder of it all. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, the, 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 the splendor of your majesty. Lord, I pray for a refreshing in each one of us, especially those of us who've experienced a few Christmases. Lord, open our eyes to the freshness, to the awe, a childlike view of the light and the joy, the decorations and the hope. Lord, let us, let us know the joy that the shepherds knew. In Jesus' name, amen. Over the years, we've instilled a few traditions, and uh, I, I'm a person who doesn't mind traditions, and Christmas Eve is one of them, Christmas Eve service. Another tradition in our house um, was started by my father before me, was uh, before any presents were opened or anything was done, we sat down and we went through the Christmas story. And as I've gotten older and as we've done it now, 49 years together, um, there comes times that I'm going, <sighs> and the word came to pass that those who were in the treaty went all over the rest of Augustus and the world shall be tabernacled. The census took place to the equinox and the governor of Syria and so they wanted to be registered in Jerusalem. Joseph also went up into Galilee out of the city of Nathan into Judea and around the city of David which is called Bethlehem. And because of this, you know, it's just like you're going through it because you've, you've read it so many times that it loses something. And as I was in prayer this week, I was thinking, Lord, have we lost the awe, the wonder, the splendor of Christ coming to earth? Is it just another holiday, just another tradition? And I spent some time with the Lord saying, Lord, I, I really, I want, to, I want to receive anew the joy and the wonder of Christmas this year. If I've allowed the junk from the world to weigh me down where I've lost the joy of the Lord, where I've lost the wonder of this season, Holy Spirit, refresh me this year. Lord, catch me in awe. Renew me, Lord. David prayed, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. We understand why he did that, but I believe all of us at times in our lives need to be restored into the joy of salvation, Amen. into the wonder of it all, that we again can be mesmerized and and caught in awe. I think most of us here have raised children and that, that awe in their eyes when they see something. And you take them to see the lights and they're just, Lord, I want that in my heart for you again. I want that awe. And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning, to prepare to receive anew the joy and the wonder of Christmas. I'm going to read what I'm going to read on part of what I'll read on Christmas morning. I won't read it as fast. But Luke, the second chapter, beginning in verse 8. Now there were, in the same country, shepherds living out in their fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. It's funny that God would first make the pronouncement to shepherds. I often have wondered myself, Lord, did you make it first to shepherds because King David was a shepherd? Did you make it first to shepherds because shepherds were 
the lowest of the low in the society. The shepherds were, could not testify in court. The shepherds were low men on the totem pole, if you will, the outcast, the unclean, even within their own people. Is that why you... I, I don't know. But he went to the shepherds first. First place. And, and, and here are people who are looked down upon, passed by, people will go the other direction. People won't have a thing to do with them. And yet God says, and I'm going to come to the shepherds. I chose my king from among the shepherds, and his name was David. Now, they were in the same country. That's just a thought. I mean, I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is thinking. By the way, if I do this with my kids and start filling in the blanks and, and this kind of stuff, they will drag me out and beat me. <laughs> But they know well enough, listen and be respectful. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel, just one angel, just an angel, one angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. This is a word that's used, the glory of the Lord shown around about. It's used three times in scriptures. And it's brilliance. It's the concept of, how many of you have ever been someplace where there was no lights from the city, where it was totally, totally black? There was no city lights. I don't mean just going out in the desert someplace, because you're always going to have that city light. I've been in places where it's so dark at night, you can put your hand right here, and you can't see it. That's how dark it is. And all of a sudden, the place lights up. It's used three times in Scripture, and it's called brilliance. The brilliance, the glory of God. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of God shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Now, and of course, you all know that's one of those places I put, duh. Because it goes from pitch black to as brilliant a light as you could possibly think of everywhere. Not just the angel, the, the entire landscape and heavens shone. But what's interesting about this word here, it has the word awe. They were just, it wasn't terrified. He told them, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It was awe and wonder. Whoa. How can this be? And the glory of the Lord shone about them. And they were greatly in wonder. They were awe. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior. Jewish word, rescuer. It's the word that Luke and Paul used most often, Savior. They use it over 40 times. And it's a Hebrew word meaning rescuer. Your rescuer. Every Jew dreamed of the Messiah. Every Jew dreamed of throwing off the shackles of Rome. Every little girl dreamed of being the Messiah's mother. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will lead all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, the Rescuer, who is Christ the Lord. We often hear Jesus Christ. Christ is not his last name. 
Christ means burden lifting, yoke destroying, power of God. Your rescuer who has the burden lifting, yoke destroying, power of God. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly, here's another word that's used about four times. I better, I didn't write it down. I, I know it's used in Revelations. Jesus will come suddenly like a thief in the night. It's used in Malachi. And there were suddenly, it's just boom. The place is lit up. It's brilliant, they're in awe, and then to top it all off, he puts a host of angels. Host, we don't know how many a host is. Probably thousands and thousands and thousands of angels. And suddenly, just poo They went from the invisible realm to the visible realm, just that quickly. There's angels in this room. You realize that. There's angels around us constantly. Randy and Shelley can attest to the fact that rain, angels take charge over us. I think most of us can, can at one point or another of our life remember we may not have seen them, but they took charge of us. And suddenly was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. Uh, it's, King James doesn't do a real good job. It's peace and goodwill towards people who please God. It's goodwill if you'll receive Him. It's good news if you'll receive Him. And so it was. When the angels had gone away from them into the heavens that the shepherds said to one another, please notice this, the angels never told them to go to Bethlehem. The angels said, hey, hey, I want you to go to Bethlehem. I want you to leave these sheep and go to... No, they just were told it was there. Something new and something fresh. I, 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 I asked, my, I, this week I've spent a lot of time with God just saying, Lord, I want that, I want that. Whoa, again. Do you know what I mean? Do you desire that in your own life at some point? That Lord restore unto me. I, I, uh, I, I look at people when they're first saved and how their lives change and how things just, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I think of a baptism I did years ago with a young man named Devin who's now with the Lord. And we had talked about a lot of things and it was a big baptismal and there was... I think it sat 14 people, and it was pretty, pretty fair. It was really nice. And so people would come down, baptize them, and then... And I talked to Devin quite a bit about, look, when you're baptized in water, you can also be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's available. Oh, yeah, yeah. And here's a very educated um, young man in his early 30s. I said, well, I want that. And... So I baptized him, brought him back up, just sort of released him because they would usually walk to that side and get out. And then I turned to the next person. And the next person goes, look at Devin, look at Devin. And he's under the water. So I reach over and I grab him and I pull him up. He's speaking in tongues. His face is as, as brilliant as, as, as the night must have been here. It was just, and he was just praising God. And, and, and I, I remember that scene, and I remember so many times, Lord, I want that again. I want that, I want that, that awe, God. That awe. And when the angels had gone away from them into, he into heaven, that shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. 
And when they, they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told by them concerning the child. Who are the first evangelists? Shepherds. First evangelists right here. They went and told what they saw. That's why people who are freshly saved often make the best testimony givers. And when they had seen him, capital him, Jesus the Christ, the Savior, the Lord, the Messiah, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. I think all of us recognize that Isaiah 9 is pretty much the chapter about Jesus, our Savior. But we often lose. Isaiah 9, 1c says this, to Galilee of the Gentiles. Where did Jesus mostly minister? In Galilee. And Isaiah is saying to Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shone. John 1, 5. His life is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Mine is um, the Living Bible. Luke 3, 4. That is written, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of the one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. And then I'm going to throw another one in here, and we'll talk about it in a minute. First Chronicles 16, 27. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Loved ones, I'd like us to prepare our hearts afresh to receive anew the wonder of Christ's birth. Emmanuel, God with us. I'd ask that we pray and seek the Holy Spirit in these coming days and weeks to rediscover with childlike awe the miracle of the light of the world coming into the world. Lord God, we come this morning longing for a deeper experience of Christ's presence and his power in our hearts and lives in the joyous season. Father, forgive us where we've been calloused and cold, where we look at Christmas as a drain on our finances rather than an opportunity to share the gospel. Holy Spirit, we desire to experience afresh the wonder, the joy, the awe that the shepherds and all those who witnessed this moment in time when the light of the world came into the world. And Lord, I pray afresh for each of us that we might share it with others. I believe when things are fresh and, and, and just, whoa, I think that's a time we are most apt to share. When the angels sang, when the prophets spoke, and when the stars shone on high, they all said the same thing. Come and behold him. Loved one, this is what I desire for each of us this Christmas season. To come afresh and behold him anew. To see with eyes that we've never seen, to be renewed with joy and expectancy, to be open to the Holy Spirit, to move in our hearts in a special way. 
Revelation tells us that the angels circle the throne of heaven and they come around and they come around and every time they come around, they cry out, holy! And one comes around again and it's holy! Every time they lap through eternity, they see a fresh aspect of God's divinity, of His greatness. It's a word that's used in awe, holy. Lord, I ask that for each of us this year, each of us that want it, that desire it, Lord, there'd be a fresh awe. We'd get a fresh glimpse. We'd return to the joy of this season. A desire for each of us that this Christmas we come and behold Him anew with awe and wonder and the joy in His majesty. I can't do it for you, but you can ask God to prepare your heart. You can begin to prepare your hearts to receive something afresh and anew. To spend some time and just say, Lord, I'd like to be rekindled. Amen? Now, three very short points. And very short, of course, that we always say is a relative term. Most of you know that I believe it is fitting and it's right that we decorate our homes and our church, his house, for the season of joy and celebration. And I want to offer a few observations about preparing our homes and our hearts for a fresh infusion of awe, joy, hope, and wonder this Christmas season. One, I want you to understand that it's righteous. I want you to be assured that it's righteous. You don't have to feel, well, what have I done wrong that I've got to come and be refreshed? How about just living in this world and watching news more than 12 seconds a day? If that doesn't drag you down. Lord, I want to be refreshed. I want to be renewed in you. There comes to be seasons of refreshing. Lord, I'm asking you to do that for this congregation this year. Be assured that the decorations and the lights, they're righteous. It's okay, and I mean it. i got to tell you, I've been chastised. I've been chastised by more than one person for over-the-talk decorations and lights and music at Christmas time. I remember this, and I don't know that I got the exact quote, but this is the gist of it. Focus is supposed to be on Christ our Savior, not lights and decoration and endless music. Loved ones, decoration of our homes at Christmas is neither a surrender to pagan traditions nor a capitulation to commercialism. Listen to what God says when he announces his son's birth. If God commissioned angels to roll back the night and fill it with blazing light, if God provided a mighty celestial choir to serenade a few startled, awestruck shepherds, If God graced the heavens with a miracle star, if God arranged such a memorial entry point as a feeding trough in a stable, if God went to all the trouble to open our eyes to his entrance into the world, then we don't need to apologize for adorning our homes and his house with seasonal reminders. Since the light of the world has come, Lights strung across the room only shout it from their rooftops. Candles and candelabra, stars and starlight, gifts and giving, songs and sonnets, singing and praising, lights and lightheartedness, angel cookies and wise men ornaments are all consistent with what transpired on this planet 2,000 plus years ago. He will be great, Gabriel told Mary, and it will be called the Son of the Highest. The Great One, the Son of the Highest, was born among us and born as one of us. Is it any wonder that the echoes of the Great Visitation roll down through the centuries and the millenniums? God vastly spread wonders in the midst of the whole flow of these events surrounding the advent of our Savior, Rescuer. The advent of Christ, 
the Lord, the burden-lifting, yoke-destroying power of God. I believe it is right and righteous that we celebrate the memory with attention and care. The wonder-filled and wonderful is entirely appropriate. Amen? Amen? Be careful for people that want to steal your joy. The second thing is, since I believe it is right, and I do believe it is righteous, I think God has given us a pretty clear display. Think about what God did when he came to announce his son's birth. I think we can decorate a little bit. And since we do it, let's do it right. Let's sanctify us. Loved ones, present your decorating and your decorations to the Lord as a tribute to him. Pray before you decorate, worship as you decorate, play praise music when you decorate, give thanks to Him after you decorate. Paul writes in Colossians 3.17, Whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God, the Father by Him. Now tomorrow we're going to begin decorating. The workers that are here, we are going to start with prayer and praise. That's how it starts. You make sure that, Lord, we, we welcome you to our time. We'll pray something along the line, Jesus, you're, you're, you're welcome. We're doing all this decor as a tribute to you. Please receive it as an expression of our thanks and thanksgiving to you expression of thanking you for coming and the joy your life gives us. Amen? I, I got to tell you, I've, I've taken enough hits over the time about the decorations we do at our home that I finally came back swinging. And I said, it's not commercialism and it's not crass. It's done to glorify God. It's done to lighten up the place, to give it a whole fresh look. Lord, I want a freshness in each one of us this season. I want an awe. Ask the Holy Spirit to reignite in each of us the awe and the wonder of the advent of our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Allow the concept of Emmanuel, God with us, to be renewed in each of us. Ask the Holy Spirit to the, the, tell him your, your ears are open and you want to hear his voice. That's one of the first ways you can, you can get revived is just humble yourself and say, Holy Spirit, I want, I want to be directed by you today. I, I want you to speak to me. And after you've read your word and spent your time, he'll speak to you. All of you know the time I was uh, in court. <laughs> I have to use that carefully. I had a degree in counseling and marital and family, and I'd, the courts had assigned me uh, a young girl to counsel because um, a worldly psychologist had said she's crazy. And the reason she was crazy is she talked to God and she heard from God. She was 14. There was nothing wrong with her. She just had a deep relationship with Jesus Christ. Had a unique family. And there was a fight between the mother and the father who were separated. And they were trying to prove the other one unfit. And so this was the thing. And I'm in the box. And some of you have heard the story. The lawyer says, well, what do you think about in her name? And... Uh, hearing from God and talking to God. And I said, yeah, what's the problem? And he says, do you believe? I said, yes, I believe she hears from God, and I believe she talks to God. The Bible is very clear. Well, no, 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 don't have to get religious. And I said, that's what this is all about. And then he mocks, and he laughs a couple of times. And I said, well, I, I, I hear from God, and I talk to God. And then, come on, please, please. 
Come on, you, 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 God doesn't talk now. I said, yes, he does. And we went back and forth maybe for 60, 90 seconds, him mocking and scoffing. And finally, Judge Thomas leans over the, his bench and he goes, hey, the question's been asked and answered. And for your information, I talk to God and I hear from God. Clear? <laughs> <laughs> and there's one of those times in our Christian life you're not supposed to smirk, but I did. <laughs> I was quickly dismissed from the witness stand. But I think one of the ways if we want freshness in our life, we need to be asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And then do what he says. Don't joyce it. I'm not going to explain that again. Ask somebody else if you don't understand what that means. Don't ignore it. Don't decide, well, that wasn't the Holy Spirit, that was gas. If the Holy Spirit's saying something, we need to write it down. I tell people this all the time. If you believe you got a word from the Lord, you write it down and you date it and you sign it. And then you obey it. If you're not sure, you write it down, you date it, and you sign it, and you go from, find somebody that's mature in the Lord and have them pray with you. Amen. Amen? Amen? Write it down, date it, and sign it. God with us to be renewed in each of us afresh and anew this season. And thirdly, I invite you to share the joy and the freshness, the awe of the season with others. Loved one, it is a witness to your neighbors when they see you a believer. And by the way, I hope every one of your neighbors believes, knows that you're a believer. So many in the world think Christians are uptight and dour, incapable of genuine gladness. Always, remember this word? Grumbling and complaining and moaning but when those neighbors and relatives encounter a person a home filled with lights and decorations true happiness a life filled with joy and hope and a warm generous attitude it can be utterly disarming to skeptics perhaps you can take some time and Make a plate of cookies for each neighbor and put a note of care and encouragement in it and a note of why you have joy. You don't have to sit on their chest until they repent. You just have to let them know that you have joy and hope because Emmanuel, God with us, I bring you good news good news to those that will accept him. But you know, you're going to probably go shopping. And when you go shopping, put a smile on your face. Don't whine and grumble and gripe. Don't try to cut that person off for that last parking spot. Give it to them. Tell them God loves them. Tell people Merry Christmas. When you put your money in the Salvation Army bowl, and I pray that you do, say verbally, Lord, I pray that this goes to the person that needs it most. Lord, you direct what I'm giving. I, I was telling someone about what a giving church this is and the numerous ministries and they were shocked. They said, well, you people can't do that. Yeah, we can. Because our God is faithful. And when he tells us something, we do it. And he's our source. So, if you were here last Monday, you ate 11 pizzas. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> 11 king-size pizzas. Our church 
coupled with the Hispanic church, packed 617 shoeboxes ourselves. Amen. Amen. That's 1,607, 617 children who get the gospel of Jesus Christ. We had 1,903 shoeboxes dropped off that we had to total up or pack up. We collected 4,027 shoeboxes, 14,000, excuse me, in West Portland, dropped off to us on Monday. We loaded 900. And by the way, I apologize. I apologize. I keep saying we. I was at the coast with my wife <laughs> in a really nice uh, motel, hotel and... Uh, looking at the ocean for our 49th anniversary. So we packed up 950 cartons. We loaded three trailers. Amen. Amen, Paul. Right. Take a good look at what Pregnancy Center. Come on, somebody give me my name. House Grace, Saving Grace, see what their wish is. Some of the ladies may wish to make some things. They, they have a wish list, and so you may want to touch that. Our missionary in Uganda is doing great. God is blessing and blessing and blessing. I'm so thankful to pastor you. I've never pastored a more generous group of people in my life. When you go see the lights with the family or friends, rejoice that the light of the world has come. If at all possible, find a small child and take them to see the lights. See the ooh and the ah. And since I'm about four, you can take me. <laughs> Open up your heart to a fresh touch of awe and wonder. I, I, I've asked God so many times this week, Lord, I, I want the, the shock and the awe. I want, I want the awe that the shepherds must have felt. The joy of the Savior, the Messiah has been born. The burden lifting, yoke destroying power of God has come to earth. Hurry, hurry. Let's go see what the angels shared. I know it's out of vogue, but perhaps some of us could get some Christ joy-themed Christmas cards and send them to others, especially to shut-ins, people who you know are struggling, friends or relatives you haven't communicated for a long time. Put Christ in there. A lot of people just need to know that they're thought of and loved. Amen? I believe that one of the ways if we want a refreshing, we need to refresh others. The Bible says if you're going to be, if you have friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. And I believe it's the same with if we want a refreshing from the Lord, then we need to reach out and re help others up and bless them. Look what the first evangelist did. They told, and they now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all who heard it marveled. Marveled. Lord, as we share your advent, your coming, let people marvel. Not at us, but at you. Make a declaration that this season your desire of the Holy Spirit is to be renewed, refreshed, and to redirected by Him to, be a, to bless others. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Amen? Let's get out there and let's turn some frowns into smiles. Let's bless some people. Let's absolutely be a blessing.
Turn on the lights. Jesus is in our home. Turn on your heart. Oh, we can't afford that. If God tells you to do something, you can afford it. He'll take care of it. Amen? Amen. And I want to encourage you. Absolutely enjoy this Christmas season. Let's be refreshed and let's be refreshing. Let's get a fresh glimpse. Lord, I wanted that awe, that awe again. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. If you want to know what God thinks about glitz and glitter, read 1 Kings, the 3rd and 4th and 5th chapters, and read 2 Chronicles. Those are the fixtures that go into the temple. The angels that are solid gold, overlaid in solid, pure gold, not solid, pure gold. What are they, 20 what feet? 20 some feet. Everything is pure gold. All the precious stones. Finest ever. God likes his house. And Lord, let us keep it that way. Amen? Lord, we do it to you. We welcome your presence. And Lord, we welcome opportunities for each one of us, Lord, to, to reach and to love someone, to reach out and, and renew and, and bring joy to someone. Holy Spirit, touch our hearts. Lord, I, I pray for myself and for those that also desire it, Lord, to be renewed to be again as a child, shock, wonder. Holy Spirit, I'm open to it. If you're open to it, just say, I'm open to it. I'm open to it, Lord. Let this be the most glorious season, Advent season yet, in Jesus' name. Amen.